Hello and welcome. We are going to talk about loving our lungs today. So aside from the obvious, we know that we must breathe in order to live. We're going to talk about um, some other, some ways to keep the lungs healthy and just briefly talk about what, what else do the lungs do for us? So not only as we breathe in, are the lungs bringing in and transporting oxygen into our bloodstream. But they're also, as we breathe out, we're releasing carbon dioxide from the bloodstream, which is extremely important. We have to, that, that's a huge part of keeping our pH balanced. Because when we keep the carbon dioxide levels lower in the body, normal in the body, right? there's going to be less acidity. And we know that when we keep our acidity levels down, that there's less chance of other things going wrong in the body. So that's a big deal. Um, when we breathe, we're naturally bringing in irritants, contaminants into the lungs, into the body. So if we do that often, if we bring in contaminants often, um, it's going to weaken the respiratory system it will cause toxicity within, throughout the body for reasons of that we just talked about, you know, the, the bloodstream, oxygen flowing through the bloodstream and things, and make us much more susceptible to, um, to damage and to infection, things like that. So some of the things that might be triggers that are common would be just environmental irritants, and that could be anything environmental, you guys. So air pollution, exhaust fumes, things in our home, off-gassing of different, you know, carpeting and all different things like that. Air fresheners and fragrances are huge. And the majority of people, whether we realize it or not, are actually react negatively to those types of things. And then any other allergen for the individual in particular, things like anxiety can also cause respiratory um, issues, heavy exertion, secondhand smoke. So you know, we used to think that only if we were a smoker did, this, did the, smoke in, the smoke bother us. But we actually know now there's a lot of research that shows that growing up or being in a home with people that smoke can cause a lot of damage to people just breathing that in. So secondhand smoke, um, having a congested colon. So if the colon isn't functioning properly and, is, and we aren't eliminating properly, that can affect the lungs as well. And then with the um, adrenals being on the weakened side, that has a direct effect on our respiratory system also. So we really, I wanna stop just for a moment and talk about bioaccumulation. And I really feel like it's something we don't talk about enough. Um, the body can tolerate small amounts of toxicity, small amounts of irritants and chemicals and things like that. But if over time, Imagine what that looks like if every single day we put on perfume, ladies. Um, we're breathing that in, we're putting that on our skin, and just we don't have to ingest it like through our mouth in order to ingest something. So, breathing it is an ingestion, putting it on our skin topically is a form of ingestion. So, if we're doing things over and over and over to our body or exposing our body to th certain things then we reach at some point a tipping point and the body just can't tolerate it anymore and we become sick. Things begin to go wrong. So often we see that more toward middle age because that's a tipping point. You know, we've been able to, to accommodate, the body's been able to do a lot of things. It's very resilient, created so magnificently to heal itself and it can do that very well until it reaches a tipping point. And then we start to fall apart, so to speak. You hear people talk about, oh my gosh, I hit 40 or I hit 45 or I hit 50 and everything fell apart. Well, that, it, that's just an accumulation of everything we've been doing to our bodies all throughout the years. So it can be things like, you know, the, the fumes from the candles that we're burning or fragrances that we're using, those plugins and things like that, makeup, shampoo, deodorant, um, all of those things make a difference that we're exposing our bodies to. So 
how do we know if we might need to love a little extra hard on our lungs? Well, some of the things that would indicate that might look like a history of bronchial asthma or bronchitis, frequent congestion of the lungs, living or working around people who smoke or smoking ourselves, recurrent sinus or upper respiratory infections, recurrent chronic, can't speak, chronic coughing. Um, if we feel a tightness in our chest, so even to the point of maybe feeling like we, you know, we're in a vice. It's very painful. There are, like anything else, there are emotional components to any type of um, symptom that we experience. So directly related to the lungs would be things like despair, grief, sadness, um, inner crying, rejection. Those are all emotions that we know are very strongly associated with the lungs in particular. So thankfully, we have some emotional oils that we can use to help to bring back to restore balance. So some of those in particular for these emotions would be joy, hope, acceptance, release, and forgiveness. So we could use those just by taking, you know, a few drops, putting them in our hand and applying them to different parts of the body, different areas of the body, the bottom of the feet, the neck, the, the back of the neck, behind the ears, over the ears, over the chest, and then this, breathing in really deeply to take those oils, the molecules of those oils up through the olfactory system, up through the nasal passageways into the lungs. Very powerful. Now, I personally love using affirmations when I use my oils. Um, and in particular, to these emotions that we're talking about associated with our lungs, we could do an affirmation of, I love life. I choose life. I am filled with joy. I am comforted. So ideally, when we're using our oils and we're applying them to the body and when we're inhaling, bringing them into the body, we would out loud say whatever affirmation or affirmations resonate with us. And we want to speak it out loud so that we hear it ourselves. We hear ourselves say those words. Um, a lot of science behind that that I'm not going to go into right now. The more we say it, the more we believe it. And do it at least three times. So I love life. I love life. I love life. Now, the chakras or the energy centers of the body and, and the chakras are, are just their energy hubs. So when, when energy isn't flowing properly through the body, we're going to have sickness and disease and pain and inflammation and all of these negative things. So we want our energy to continually flow properly. So the two chakras or energy centers that are associated specifically with the lungs and the respiratory system would be the heart. So right over the middle of your chest. So you might want to take your oil and you may want to apply some of that oil there as you're making your affirmation. Also the solar plexus. So that's, that's just go down a few inches and right at the bottom of the rib cage there, right over the stomach, that's the solar plexus. And so that's another um, energy center that we can apply the oils to. Most of us are shallow breathers. And actually, we hold our breath a lot. Isn't that crazy? We don't think about it, we don't, we don't do it on purpose, it just happens. And to become a shallow, uh, to become a deep breather really takes intention. So there's some great benefits 
to, to breathing deeply. It reduces stress. It strengthens our immune system. It reduces tension and anxiety. It increases oxy oxygenation. I can't talk this morning for some reason in the blood. It aids in digestion. And it also may reduce pain. So all of those things are pretty good. So let's talk about how to deep breathe in case you don't know. Um, when you start doing it, it's really, you're going to have to do it intentionally. So it's great to get into a position where you're really comfortable. So you may want to just lie down on your bed. And what you're going to want to do is breathe through your nose, in through your nose. And when you exhale, you're going to exhale through your mouth. And what you can do to see that you are deep breathing is as you're laying there, and we can all do this, um, as, we're, as you're laying there, and even sitting where you are today, just put your hand kind of over that solar plexus, this right at your belly, right? Hold your hand right there, and now let's all just breathe in really deep through our nose, and feel your belly move, and then breathe out through your mouth, okay? Ready? We want to do that at least four times consecutively. So could you tell just by doing that, you know, once or twice, three or four times, I did it twice, but it's calming. It's just calming to you. It's oxygenating to the entire body, including your brain. And when the brain has more ox oxygen, we could be more present. So I encourage you to practice that daily. And just throughout the day, whenever you think about it, just stop for a few minutes and go, oh, I'm going to breathe deep and get into the habit of doing that. Now, there are some amazing oils that work really well to support healthy breathing. Um, and we can, again, put those on topically. We can inhale them. And the Vitality line of oils, Young Living has an amazing line of Vitality oils. And, and you guys, I would only use Young Living. Our essential oils need to come from living plants. So we need to know the source. And I trust Young Living, and I only trust Young Living. Um, Raven. RC. Breathe again. Dorada Azul, eucalyptus. There's so many different types of eucalyptus. They're all amazing for, for supporting healthy breathing. Myrtle, thieves, grand fur. We have known it for a long time as Idaho balsam fur. It's now known as grand fur. Myrrh, copaiba, peppermint, rosemary, and frankincense. Those are some of my very favorites to use to support healthy breathing. So now the body has um, Vitaflex points. Our hands and our feet are a mapping of our body. And we can apply these oils also on our hands or our feet to, on particular areas on those Vitaflex points to, to um, get to whatever part of the body we wanna work on. So today we're working on the lungs and the respiratory system. So I don't know if you can see, I'm gonna try to get this up there where you can see. So the pad of the foot, along the pad of the foot under the toes, is where the lungs are. So those are points that you could put the oils onto the feet, okay? So the pad of the foot, the right below the, right below the toes. Now, the top of the foot, so those ridges that run at the top of the foot between the toes, so on my hand, these ridges here between my fingers, 
Those are the bronchioles. So we can apply the oils there, put them on there. And if you Vitaflex, so Vitaflex is just simply putting your fingers on a part of your body, going from the pad to the tip of the fingers over to the nail. So all you're rolling your fingers all the way over. So you're going pad, tip, nail. I'm trying to get where you can see that. Pad, tip, nail. And it's a rolling motion. So if we put the oil on our hand or our foot, you know, we put Raven here, and then we just did the Vitaflex across that area, that synergizes the oil and it helps to send it to the lungs faster. So there's a lot of, a lot of science about that. It's not hoo hoo hooky stuff. It's a real thing. Um, another thing that I love for getting the, um, the oils into, the, into my body to, so I can breathe really well is a fume stick. So it's just, there's a, there's a little wick in it. And in mine, I have Raven. And I can just inhale really deeply and bring that, that um, Raven deep into my lungs. And I can feel that. So that's an easy way to remind me of doing some of that deep breathing. Now, we want to think about the sinuses, the nasal passageways, and the sinuses when we're talking about the lungs because they're that first line of defense as far as bringing air into the body, right? So we want to keep the nasal passageways and the sinuses, like, um, we want to keep the air warm and moist. So Vitaflex, we can Vitaflex the sinus points as well. And those sinus points, so if we look back over here, the toes right at the base of the toes are sinus points. So we can put oils there on our toes and we can Vitaflex that region to get the oils onto the body, into the body really well. We can of course put some of the oils topically over our sinuses. Just remember some of the oils are warmer. Um, you may want to dilute them with a little bit of V6 carrier oil so they're not quite as strong, especially when you're going around the eyes but those are really good places um, to use them. Now, I personally love, especially in the winter time, to make a nose ointment because it, the air in the winter is so dry, at least it is in Arkansas, that I find my nose dries out really easily. So I have a little, um, little jar. You can see the size of it. It's about... This is compared to a five mil bottle, so it's pretty small. I have animal sense ointment in here. You could use rose ointment. And then I put in mine 15 drops of Exodus 2. Some people love putting Egyptian gold. If you happen to not have one of those blends, then go to your reference guide, see what's in those blends, and mix accordingly. Or use something that you love. But basically, I take a Q-tip then, dip it into my mixture, and I swab the inside of my nose. That helps to keep the, my nose really moist. And, um, and it also helps filter out some of the contaminants that I might be breathing. So right now in the wintertime, I love, love using that. Another thing that I like to do is make a nasal spray. And so you can see that the top on this is actually a nasal top so that it fits right into the nasal cavity really easily. So um, in a two ounce dropper bottle or two ounce spray bottle rather, I take a pinch of Himalayan salt. So you want it to be, you know, pink salt. You don't, don't use table salt. Um, and then I put in mine, and you can play with this. You can always add more oils. Okay. So if you want to start with less, until you're, you see how you're going to react. I use four drops each of Copaiba, lavender, frankincense, and eucalyptus. So I'm using Vitality Oils here. I'm just, I've got my salt and my oils, and I'm just going to kind of mix that around, let that sit for a minute, just twirl it a little bit, and let that salt dissolve into the oils. And then I'm going to fill it with distilled water. Easy peasy, you've just made a nice nasal spray. So you can sh just shake it every time you use it and use it 
whenever you feel like you need to. Again, it's another way to help keep things open and moving. And when it's when you're really dry in the winter, it helps to keep some moisture there. Can, can you say that? Can you say that again, Rhonda, please? I will. I will repeat that. Um, a pinch of Himalayan salt, four drops each of copaiba, lavender, frankincense, and eucalyptus. I let that let that just melt a little bit, and then I fill it with distilled water. Um, another thing that I like to do is I like to make a vapor rub. So I have a little um, container. I put a quarter of a cup of Animal Sense ointment. Gotta love Animal Sense ointment, right guys? And then I put between 30 and 40 drops of any of those oils that I talked about earlier. And you can, you can do combinations. You can mix it to be whatever you want it to be. Of all those oils that we talked about that helped with healthy breathing. And then I can put it just over my neck. I can put it on my chest. I can put it on the bottom of my feet. Um, I, can, I can't reach my lungs so much on my back, but I can certainly have someone, I can have Frank put that on or you can have someone put that on for you. So that's easy to do. And another great way to help with healthy breathing. I've got a recipe for a neti pot brew. So if anybody uses a neti pot, now this is not, we're not using this all in, the, in a neti pot at once. So please hear me when I say that. That this is the mixture. It's 10 drops of rosemary, six drops of tea tree, eight tablespoons of pink Himalayan salt. And you're gonna take that, mix it in a glass container, and you're gonna put in one and a half cups of distilled water. You're just gonna like shake that up, dissolve the salt in there and mix the oils around really well. But what you're gonna do when you use your neti pot, you're gonna use one teaspoon of that, okay? Do not do 10 drops of rosemary, six drops of tea tree in your neti pot at one time. Just, you will not like me after that. So make sure that you just mix that together. You, you can keep it, it'll keep for quite a while and use a teaspoon at a time and use your neti pot just the way you normally would. So a couple of diffuser blends that I really love to support healthy breathing, six drops of eucalyptus, you can use any of them for a combination, and two drops of the grand fur. Great combination to just help with some good deep breathing. And then I have another, another um, diffuser blend recipe that I love, just when you need to go, oh, anybody ever feel like that? Two drops of frankincense, four drops of RC, and four drops of lemon. Now, some other things that we can do to help keep our lungs strong and healthy. We can avoid mucus forming foods. Things like dairy and sugar are mucus forming foods. Have you ever eaten something and almost immediately got kind of a tickle in your throat and you started <clears throat> Well, that's because it was mucus forming. So when that happens to you, pay attention to what it was that you just ate, because there can be other things that, that, that can cause mucus depending on us individually. So when you experience something like that, then think about what did I just eat and know that that's probably something you want to avoid in your diet because it's causing mucus. And if it's causing mucus here, it's going to cause mucus and inflammation in other areas of the body. Um, antioxidants are the first line of defense that we can give to our bodies and to our lungs in particular. So Ningxia Red, powerful antioxidant, a wonderful gift for our body. Super C, great immune system defense, which supports the lungs. We wanna make sure that we're drinking plenty of 
clean, pure water that keeps things flushing and moving through the body. It's crucial. And we, the body's got to have the moisture. Um, if you've got, if you know that you've got a lot of lung congestion, if you've got some of those things going on that we talked about early on, signs that you need to support and love your lungs harder, better, do a colon cleanse. A colon cleanse is a powerful way to start to get the lungs cleared. And I know that sounds a little interesting, but trust me when I tell you, a colon cleanse is a great gift to, to the liver. Good oral health, because remember, upper respiratory. So good oral health is amazing support for the, for the lungs. So things like thieves mouthwash, keeping our mouth clean, thieves toothpaste, good oral health is really, really beneficial um, to support the lungs. So I told you several things that we can do intentionally to make sure that we keep these lungs strong and healthy and doing what they need to do and giving you some recipes that I hope that you find very, very beneficial. So I want to thank you.